Hello, Electro Jeweler Jordan here, and today we are going to make the best DIY electroform formula for small tanks. Most internet electroform recipes are just industrial electroform solutions shoved into a small tank. This one is specially formulated for use in small tanks like yours. Since heat supercharges the electroform process, this low acid formula is also good for hot rooms, hot climate, summer electroform, for artists that have trouble with copper oversaturation, or the dreaded glitter. Today we are going to follow these checklists because it's easy to follow and you could download it on my website for free. First thing on the checklist, safety equipment. Okay, go. Next thing you want to do is measure out your chemicals. Copper sulfate, 180 grams. The sulfuric acid. With the sulfuric acid, you just want to make sure it's not cloudy or discolored. You want it perfectly clear. The amount of sulfuric acid that you're going to use depends on the percentage or concentration of the sulfuric acid that you have. This electroform recipe uses 30 grams of sulfuric acid per liter. This chart will help you to determine how much acid you will require. The exact volume of acid that you will need in ML depends on the concentration or percentage of acid that you have. For example, if you are in the EU and using 15% sulfuric acid, you will acid. need 200 ml per liter. And if you are in the US and have battery acid at 37%, you will need 81 ml per liter. Other percentages are listed on the chart also. Number four is that the complete amount of copper sulfate per liter. So I'm doing one liter, so that will be 180 grams. Number four, if you have some lumps in your copper sulfate, just add a little bit of water and just uh, take a, a bottle or something. And you could just mash that around. If the acid concentration is above 15%, add 500 ml of water. And you do not add acid at this time. If the acid concentration is 15% or below, like I have today, I have 9%, you're gonna add 500 ml of the, the diluted acid and water if needed. I'm gonna go to my chart, figure out how much acid I need. 9% is 333 ml. So I'm gonna measure that out. Okay, right here I have 250 ml. All right, so there's 80 ml more, so it's gonna be a total of approximately 333. Now number six is you're just gonna stir really well. You could do it by hand or with a magnetic stirrer. Like, subscribe, don't miss anything. Watch till the end. Number seven is if your acid concentration was above 15%. At this point, you're gonna add the full amount of acid. 37%, you're gonna put the 81 ml, and if it's the 98%, you're gonna do the 16.25 ml. And the reason for this is when you have the more concentrated acids, you wanna add the acid to the water uh, so that if any heat builds up, it doesn't splash out at you. Now, after all the acid is put into the solution, you're gonna top it up. I'm not going to quite top it up to one liter, but almost at this point. Number eight, you're going to add the chloride solution. I have another video on this, so I don't need to go over it here, but I'm going to add seven ml to this solution, and that will bring me up to 70 ppm, or parts per million of chloride in the solution. And I do this instead of uh, hydrochloric acid. We have seven ml right there, and we're going to stir that in. What does chloride do? Check out this video on chloride dosing. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the brightener. Lustro Electro, we're going to add five drops into the solution. And that's five drops per liter. And then we're going to add the Lustro Smootho. And per each liter, I'm going to put one ml. A common mistake that I see is people will mix up their solution and then at the end add a full liter of water. And if you do that, you won't have the perfect concentration of all the chemicals in your solution. So your solution probably won't work as well as it should. I'm just going to put this on a magnetic stir. So I'll mix it up for maybe 10 minutes and all the copper sulfate should be totally 100% dissolved and all the chemicals mix thoroughly. The next two items on the checklist, a lot of people skip, but they're super important. First thing, to filter your solution. It might have dust in it, a little debris, anything like that that gets into your solution will potentially bad results with your electroform. And if you filter it first and you get bad results, then well, you know there's not foreign contaminants in it, it's something else. So this is a really good way to start troubleshooting even before you begin. So just filter it. If you're just going to do a small quantity, this is a really easy way to do it. Two coffee filters. And the next step is to test plate. And that is making sure your solution can plate properly. If you don't do that and you go right into a project, something happens, then you don't know if it's the solution itself. Maybe your conductive paint is not working properly. But if you test plate first and you prove that your solution works well, it makes electroforming so much easier going forward.
So let's try this out and test plate in the next video.